today we'll discuss regarding emery drifis muscular dystrophy it's an uncommon muscular dystrophy with a characteristic phenotype so what is the characteristic triad we'll discuss regarding that it was initially described by drifis and hogan so emery drifis it is x linked or sometimes autosomal transmitted dystrophy the estimate prevalence is 1 is to 1 lakh so what is the characteristic triad the characteristic triad is of a slowly progressive muscular weakness we can say a humoral parental distribution early contractures in the course of the illness cardiac involvement uh, in the form of conduction defects arrhythmias and dilated cardiomyopathy here you can see the ankle contracture toe walking neck contracture elbow contracture and uh, again ankle contracture so what is the pattern of muscle weakness it is gradually progressive initially in the humoral peroneal distribution wasting of biceps triceps with preservation of deltoid biceps tricep is uh, wasted deltoid is preserved and ankle dorsiflexion weakness early in the course of the disease and then extension to scapular and pelvic girdle muscle this is the pattern lmna is one of the gene affected joint contractures are quite prominent in one of the triad which begins in the early childhood in all the elbow flexors as you can see ankle plantar flexors and spine what are the diagnostic clues inability to extend elbow completely and early toe walking rigid spine these two are characteristic diagnostic clues third is cardiac involvement it is later in the course of the disease usually by the fourth decade palpitation pre syncope syncope poor exercise tolerance could be features congestive heart failure along with bradyarrhythmia or tachyarrhythmia could be there or there could be a dilated cardiomyopathy so what is the pathophysiology these are all nuclear enolopathies these are all uh, membrane proteins nuclear membrane proteins there are three major group of proteins common location at the nuclear membrane one is emerin is fhl1 and this emerin and fhl1 is associated with x linked edmd and the lamin is associated with autosomal dominant and recessive edmd so by two mechanisms they are hypothesized to work and to cause this disease uh, one is by disruption of this inner nuclear membrane the nuclear lamina disorganization of the nuclear chromatin and gene expression the second is this disruption of the mechanical strength of the cell nucleus that leads to weakening of the nuclear lamina so how to diagnose so for diagnose there is a classical triad plus family history cpk level is usually normal or moderately elevated 2 to 20 times electrophysiology usually myopathic features with normal nerve conduction neuropathic features in x linked edmd sometimes muscle mri there is a diffuse pattern of involvement of the various muscles what are the differential diagnosis one is limb girdle muscular dystrophy with cardiac involvement but there would not be any joint contractures the onset would be later and lower girdle weakness more prominent fshb could also be a differential diagnosis but the clinical pattern of weakness is typical there are no joint contractures and cardiac disease there could be rigid spine syndrome or collagen type 6 bethlem but there is no cardiac in bethlem and uh, there is a specific muscle imaging pattern in bethlem dystrophinopathy there is no joint contractures pompes there is no joint contractures these are all the differentials so how to manage regular monitoring of cardiac function by ecg 2d echo halter respiratory function by chest x ray abg vital capacity monitoring of glycemia insulinemia triglyceridemia particularly in lmna gene involvement three things sugar insulin triglyceridemia that we need to monitor with lmna involvement so for the treatment physiotherapy and stretching exercises to prevent contractures if there is cardiac involvement depending upon if there is arrhythmia anti arrhythmic drugs pacemaker and defibrillator could be required like here the defibrillator is required just heart failure diuretic sedatives could be used as for assistance assisted coughing techniques or non invasive or invasive ventilation may be necessary surgery for the release of contracture for ease of embolization what is the prognosis age of onset severity and progression are variable some have childhood onset with rapid progression uh, some have adult onset slowly progressive uh, this autosomal dominant can be usually wheelchair bound in advanced stages and next thing there is a loss of embolization is rare so it is variable So thanks to listening to my lecture like share and subscribe for more updates